Hey guys, welcome back to Reading Your Bible in a Year. My name is Logan, and if you're just joining me for the first time, then this year we're reading through our Bible together so that we can grow in Christ. If you want, if you want to learn more, there's information in the description of this video, such as a playlist and also the Bible plan that I'm currently reading. Today we're going through Deuteronomy 8 through 11, and I want to ask the question of, does God care if you keep sinning, or if you're saved, why does it matter? if you continue to live in sin. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I think it's very prevalent in our in our culture. I often tell people that I believe the church is kind of split this way. Either we are really the church is, is the church and what people think of it that live outside of the church is that the church is really really far into judgment. Like I heard it once say the haha church. Like haha, you're going to hell if you're smoking hot. You're drinking, you're going to hell and they like chuckle in between it. Or they have the opposite end of that, which is grace only, where everything's okay, you can just come to Jesus and He loves you anyways, and grace is applied, and that's the whole message. There's no message of repentance, there's no message of fleeing from sin, it's all about grace, 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 grace. And I think we're supposed to be somewhere in the middle where we realize that the judgment of God is real and that we should fear the Lord. And that fear I'll cover later. It's not a fear like, well, I'm scared of Freddy Krueger or the boogeyman. It's, it's, a, it's more of a respect. And we should also realize that, that that judgment is real, but the grace that God has is sufficient and is real. And so how do we apply that? And then what should we do once we're saved? Well, in Deuteronomy today, we see the Israelites who have been marching through the desert for years. Moses is giving kind of his goodwill speech to them. And this is what he says in chapter 8. He's calling them to remember and then obey. He's telling them things like eight, four. For all these 40 years, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not blister or swell. Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good. This is 18. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the power to succeed in order to fulfill the covenant. He confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. Moses, he is encouraging them to remember the good things that God did for them, but for a specific Mm -hmm. reason. In chapter 9, it says this, Listen, O Israel, today you are about to cross the Jordan River to take over the land belonging to the nations greater and more powerful than you. They live in cities with walls that reach to the sky. They say things like, Who can stand up against the Amakites? So Moses is saying, look back at what God did for you and these miracles that you've lived through in order to know that he is going to provide a way forward. But Moses encouraged us not, to not only look back at what God did that was good, but also look back at what they did that was bad. This is Deuteronomy 9, 7. Remember and never forget how angry you made the Lord your God out in the wilderness. From the day you left Egypt until now, you have been constantly rebelling against him. And he goes on to talk about the the golden calf at Mount Sinai, which is a really, really big deal. But oftentimes, I think we have these golden calves in our lives that we don't really think that much about. Maybe we did something that was really awful to someone else, but it's Oh, they're the one that struggles with it, and I'm okay. Or we continue to live in a sin pattern of our life that we're never going to escape because, oh, it's not that big of a deal. God has grace for me. But the first thing that I want us to realize about sin is that it, it makes God have anger towards sin. God wants to destroy sin. God wants the world to be perfect and through the purification of fire or through destroying sin is how he achieves that. But also it makes... God sad. I think it breaks the Lord's heart. It breaks his heart to the point that he's willing to die and pay for our own sin on the cross. So next time you sin, realize that it doesn't just affect you or the people around you, but I think in in some ways it affects God. And I don't want to counterdict. And this is a very touchy subject because God is God and he's going to do what he's going to do, but he does love us. And I think when you are in a relationship with someone and you do something to hurt them, that does cause them pain, no matter 
who they are. And then this should give you motivation to flee from your sin. If our sin does anger God, if our sin does hurt God, then why would we want to continue living in it? If we say, Jesus, you're enough for me. Thank you for dying for me, but I'm going to continue doing whatever the heck I want. Then you probably don't actually mean that. If you do love God, then you'll obey his commandments. That's what Jesus says. And then finally, I think the thing that we need to realize that even back then, this is what it says in Deuteronomy 9, 18. Then as before you, I threw myself down before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. This is what it says in Deuteronomy 9, 21. I took your sin, the golden calf you had made, and I melted it down into fire and ground it into fine dust. Then I threw the dust into the stream that flows down the mountain. A lot of us would see this as a waste. We would see grinding up gold and throwing it down a mountain as a waste. But Moses sees it as sin, as dealing with sin in the best way he knew how to. That oftentimes we hold on to things that are causing us to sin because they look pretty or sound nice. But our sin was paid for on the cross. And as Jesus says, if your right hand causes you to to stumble, then cut it off. So what Moses is doing here is he's cutting off the thing that is causing the people to sin, all of this gold that they can turn in to statues. So our sin was completely paid for on the cross, but we should follow in Moses' leadership by cutting off things that are going to cause us to continue to stumble. And here's why. This is Deuteronomy 11, 26. Look, today I'm giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. You will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord your God I'm giving you today, but you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from him and worship the gods you have not known before. Moses is setting a choice between the people, and it's the same choice that God has set up for you. It's that God is setting up life and death. He's telling you to choose. As Paul talks about, sin is death. And once we have been brought alive in Christ, how can we continue to live in death? If you have been saved, then you should flee from sin. But you should also know that your sin was completely destroyed and completely paid for on the cross. And while guilt is good to get you to turn towards repentance, it is not your burden to bear for the rest of your lives. So thanks so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that way you can continue to follow me as I read through the Bible with you. I'll see you back here tomorrow.